So, seconds out, delighted to be joined by Five and One Rachel Ball. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Um, we're obviously speaking to you because you've got what will be, at least in the UK, the most high profile fight of your career so far a fight camp um, against Shannon Courtney. Just tell us, first of all, how the fight came about and what your first reaction was, not just to fighting her specifically, but the whole fight camp environment. Um, so it first came about really, I think um, we, we did try to get this fight early on in the year, but one thing or another, it didn't happen. Then we went into lockdown. Um, so I think with um, lockdown, the fact that we've got to have domestic fights, I think that's really how, how the fight has, has been secured, to be honest with you. And what did you make when the fight was offered? What did you make of the whole fight camp concept and the fact you'd be fighting in the matchroom, HQ, back guard and no fans? Well, um, you know, obviously being on a matchroom show, it's it's a massive platform. You know, it's it's where you want to be if you're if you're a boxer, really. Um, and even if there's there's no crowd, you've still got obviously thousands of people watching at home. So it's it's just a brilliant pat- platform to be on, and uh, I think it's going to be a brilliant series of fights, really. You come from a kickboxing background, um, started at 17, and then later transitioned to boxing. I think you had sort of a few white collars in between as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What made you make the transition from kickboxing, where you were incredibly successful, to boxing, which was kind of the unknown, albeit you know some similarity? Mm. Um, well, we we had got offered a white collar fight in Malta, which we took, and uh, when we were over there, we met Brian Rose, uh, yeah, Brian the Lion, um, and so he was saying, yeah, you should definitely go pro. You know, you could make some money in this. You should have, you know, you could have some really good opportunities. And he was like, you know, you put on a really good fight, so definitely go into it. And that really um, pushed us into going into the, the pro ranks, really. There are kind of stylistic similarities between you and Brian Rose. So that doesn't completely surprise me that he kind of picked you <laughs> out. Um, and Courtney, some would say it's early in your career, but then on the flip side, you've had the greater experience and certainly been in with the better opposition. Do you think that will be pivotal yeah. in this fight? I think so, yeah. I think so. I mean, um, some people don't know me and maybe don't know my experience in the ring, um, and then that's fine. But, um, you know, I hope they don't overlook me coming into this fight. Um, you know, I have done a lot of longer round fights. The majority of my fights have been, you know, over six rounds. So I am ready for the longer rounds, and I am very experienced as a fighter. Um, so, yeah, really, I think, you know, it's, it's going to be a good fight, I think. What weight is the fight at? Um, it's it's stated that it's at super phantom weight. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know whether I'm allowed to say too much, but um, I don't think that that is what's going to happen on, on weighing day. Um, not because of any anything that I put forward. I, I said I'll be ready at any weight, and that's what I'm, I'm going to be ready for, really. So, but yeah, I don't, I don't think it's actually going to be at. If it was at a title, it wouldn't be at super phantom weight. So. Yeah, yeah. So you're looking at a round feather, it's fair to say. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, that's what I've been told anyway. But um, yeah, weight's not an issue for me anyway. Does that help you in a way, though? Because I watched the fight with um, Tanders out in Norway. Obviously, majority decision defeat. But great account of yourself. She's now WBC interim champion at Super Feather. That fight was up at lightweight. And it just seemed at times, although technically you matched her, you were a bit out-muscled. Yeah, I mean you can you can tell just looking at the photos like when they were next to each other like you know in in some ways some ways she's like kind of twice the size of me. I mean, you know, I'm quite a tall girl but my frame is is quite petite in a way. So, you know, we kind of learned that, that those those weights aren't suited for us. I mean, when I got back home after being on a plane for an hour or so, I'd only put on 5 pounds after after weighing so you know it just really spoke volumes about how I'm not suited at that weight to be honest um but you know it just shows that I can mix it with the girls at that weight um you know when I, I held my own um but it, it's not the weight that I should be fighting at really. Given the level of opposition that Courtney's been fighting so far and the fact that you have been in with some really good people you're taller you're longer um greater experience overall regardless of quality of opposition as well do you think this is a pretty big risk for her to take early on in her career um 
I think I think she's due for a challenge, and you know, I don't think you can keep relying on um, opponents from abroad. I think you need to just kind of bite the bullet and, and take some domestic fights that are going to be challenging for you. Um, you know, and that, that's what I've done for you know a few of my fights anyway. So I think I think I think it is an overdue fight. I think it, I think she's ready for it, and I think it'll be you know a good fight for for everyone to watch. Looking at your previous fights and hers, it appears that style should mesh quite nicely. Her kind of bobbing and weaving, aggressive coming forward, do a bit more um, circumspect, but strong left jab, follow through of the straight shots. Do you think that all turn into a fan-pleasing fight? I think so, yeah. I think it's going to be an exciting fight. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't always fight on the back foot. I'm quite a dynamic fighter. Um, so I think, you know, we're, we're both aggressive in our styles as well. So I think it is, there's going to be times in the fight where it's a good tear up. And uh, I think that's going to be really exciting for everyone to watch at home. She's never been beyond round five um, so far. You've been 10 with Beck Connolly last time out and eight against Tanders out in Norway, which must have been a hostile environment. Is that going to play in your favour, do you think, as the fight goes on, you'll kind of get stronger? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm naturally an endurance athlete anyway. Like, I'll do marathons for fun, but, you know. Um, so, I think that that is in my favour. Um, you know, I think I sometimes forget that people who've come from an amateur background, they haven't gone past, you know, a few rounds, really. So, it's definitely, definitely going to work in my favour. And, and fitness has never been an issue for me in terms of going the longer rounds. Key question, and I don't know if other people will ask this, but I think a lot of fans will be wondering it. Are you concerned at all if it does go to distance about getting the decision? Because you are on a matchroom show, a matchroom headquarters on Sky Sports. I mean, you know, I'm not daft. I know how boxing works, you know. Um, and I think the fact that there's going to be no crowd there, I think that will be in my favour that, the, you know, we'll be able to hear all the shots that are landed. Um, and, you know, the, the judges or the ref won't be able to be swayed by the, the crowd. So I think that's going to be in my favour. Um, I think, you know, you know, I've just got to put it, put my all in there and leave nothing in there so there's no questions to be asked about the, the decision on, and who the winner is. I'm just going to leave everything in the ring and make sure that the, the decision is very clear that the win is mine really. So I think that's the approach that I've got to take. Um, you know, there's no other kind of approach that you can have when you're the away fighter. You've got to put it all in there because you are, you're not going to win otherwise. You have a job outside of boxing. Just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a social worker. I work for um, adults with mental health and cognitive difficulties. Um, so that's, that's me and my nine to five, really. How have you been able to get any time off leading up to this? Or will you be able to? Obviously, the fight's still a little bit away. Um, well, I've, I mean, I've took a few days off, like, you know, annual leave. But um, I have managed to have a lot more time for myself during this fight camp with you know, I haven't had this much time to myself since I started my social work career. Um, you know, not commuting is, you know, that's adding a lot more hours to my day and just being able to be at home and make myself fresh food rather than prepping everything. You know, all those little things add up really. So um, I haven't needed to have time off for, you know, training. I can get up in the morning, I can do a workout, I can go and train at lunchtime and then in the evening. So it's it's been really, I've been really fortunate really that I can work, work the training around work really. You mentioned earlier just how significant a platform a matchroom show on Sky Sports is. If you get the victory as you plan over Shannon, who's a you know relatively big name for her level, where yeah. do you see yourself going after that? And how big an opportunity is this? Yeah, you know, I, th I think it's you know it's the biggest platform you can get in boxing, really. Um, and I, I think it could be quite life changing for me. Um, and I, I expect if if things go well, that um, you know the phone calls will be coming in for the for the bigger shots, the bigger titles. So I think it's just. Um, for now, just planning on my training and concentrating on the fight. And then I think after that, you know, we'll have to take things as they come, really. Maybe bring Tanders back over for a rematch, albeit at Super Feather. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I think she, she needs to have a fight against Harper, I think. Yeah, well, I'm sure she'd agree with you on that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate your time. I think it's a fight between you and Shannon that's been not overlooked completely, but not been given the same 
level of coverage as some of the other fights during the fight camp series. And I think it's going to be an excellent and a competitive fight. So I'm, I'm looking forward yeah, to it. Definitely. Stuff. All right. Well, take care and hopefully see you in action in August. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks so much for having me on. No problem. See you again soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.